This is the survival analysis video of parametric modeling. In a parametric model, the shape of the hazard function is completely specified. This is similar in, in intent to the one-way analysis of variance for continuous outcomes, for example, where we specified that the shape of the data for each group was Gaussian, with means and standard deviations to be estimated from the data. In a parametric survival analysis, the distributions that are specified usually aren't Gaussian, but the fundamental idea is the same. This slide uh, about when you might consider using a parametric survival model contains three reasons for doing so and one condition that should usually be satisfied. One reason you might want to use a parametric model is that you're actually interested in the shape of the hazard function or the values of its parameters. For example, it might be of interest to demonstrate that the hazard function for light bulbs is constant, which means that the system has no memory and light bulbs don't grow old. In other words, knowing that a light bulb has been burning for 10 years actually doesn't imply that its days are numbered. Another example is when your follow-up time is shorter than the time period to which you want to extrapolate your results. Next slides provide an illustration. Finally, parametric models are sometimes applied in the data left sensor. The condition that you should usually be satisfied is that you have a large data set, essentially one that's large enough to allow you to estimate the hazard function precisely, and thus be able to check whether its distribution is as assumed. As an example of using parametric modeling to perform an extrapolation, a cost-effectiveness model required the expected future lifetime from the start of follow-up until death. A randomized trial was available to cover the early follow-up period, which actually ended up comparing two uh, medical interventions. And the Duke Cardiovascular Data Bank could be used to fill in the data for the next 14 years, since at the time the analysis was done, the maximum follow-up period for the patients of interest was 14 years. But the problem was what to do with, from, with, with data from years 15 until death. This graph illustrates the solution which was to use the randomized trial as data assets for year one to model the data from year one to 15 from the data bank using the Weibull model, and then plugging in the parameters from that Weibull model to extrapolate survival into the future. The cost-effectiveness analysis then used the, uh, the area under the various survival curves. Although not illustrated here, central to parametric survival modeling is the use of plots in order to help determine the appropriate shape of the hazard function. If you want to try to use a parametric survival model, you should get help. A big problem with parametric models is they aren't usually robust to misspecification. In other words, if you happen to use the wrong assumptions about the shape of the hazard function, your conclusions could be badly wrong. Semi-parametric models don't suffer from this difficulty, which is one of the main reasons for their popularity. Another problem with parametric models is they work best with large data sets, and your data set might not be large enough. 